cases the player feels that he has the good perimeter shot and he settles for that he doesn't look to be aggressive seven point piston lead 640 to go and a far different game off the start here than Sunday. Dumars committing his first foul, second team. The only player I see here on the see on the court right now with the emotion we saw in game three for the Lakers is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's something that this team really needs, and they play with a great deal of emotion. Magic with a short hook shot. Magic. Interesting you say it, because at 41 years of age, having to come back after a big effort, you think Kareem maybe would... Uh, have a little bit of a letdown. And that's been his history through the playoffs. Again, Mahorn in good position. And he beats Kareem to the hoop, 19 to 12. And that's the most points he's scored in the first period in the last 14 games in the playoffs. Worthy works inside. Kareem. You knew he'd get a foul on the basket. And a personal foul is against... No, the jump ball they call. Magic Johnson can't believe that it wasn't a foul, and I can't either. I can't. It looked like Mahorn just wrapped his arm around uh, Kareem's shoulder and, and committed a foul. <laughs> just about halfway through this first period. And it's going to be Pistons ball, a loose ball foul against Mahorn as he pushed away on the jump. Number 44, Rick Mahorn. Now let's take a look and see if that was a jump ball or did Kareem Abdul-Jabbar get fouled by Mahorn. Here we see him get that offensive rebound. Now he's going back up with it. Looked like it got him on the right shoulder. Seven-point Detroit lead, 19 to 12. Dumars jumps out at Magic Johnson on the switch. Mahorn gets a piece of it. Out of bounds. It's still Laker ball. But still great defense by the Pistons. We haven't seen them stop Magic Johnson going down the middle at all in this series. Are they jump switching? Are they making a different maneuver inside? No, they're just a little more aggressive. We just saw Mahorn just step out and give some help to a teammate. A.C. Green missing outside. Dumars backed out Magic Johnson. Isaiah Thomas still hasn't scored. Scott is in his shirt. And a good block combination with Magic and Scott there. Dumars try to get it away, and they'll give it to the Pistons. Last touch by Scott. Well, it's been the Joe Dumars show so far for the Pistons, doing the job defensively on the boards, and we saw him making that steal so far in this ballgame. And a little help from Adrian Dandley, who has hit three of four for eight points early on. Thomas has had one big scoring game, the last one, when he had 28. Byron Scott's defensive effort should not be minimized against Thomas. Well, he's shooting 41% in this series against the defense by Byron Scott. Six on the shot clock. Danley in the lane. Ten points for Adrian Danley. Biggest lead, nine points right here for Detroit. Scott missing. Kareem, he's fouled. No mistaking that one. Surprising Chuck Daly going into this game. He was going to rotate more players. He thought with this heat, fatigue would be the thing. And we see Daly going off the wrong foot and just laying it right over the top of Jamar. Lafayette committing his first foul. So everyone but Daly on the Pistons have picked up a personal foul. Kareem Abdul Jabbar, who set the early tone defensively in the last game, had three of the six block shots by the Lakers. The lead is seven, and Kareem leads the Lakers scoring with six. All five are in the book. Scott picking up Thomas. Lane Beer. Kareem clears. Green, forecourt. Pulls up over Dantley and hits. And A.C. Green, who at 9 of 11 for a playoff career high 21, makes it a 21-16 game. A.C. Green started the season off so strong, went into a slump, was benched through most of the playoffs. Lane Beer missed, and he knew it, started heading down the other side. And now the five-point lead, Lakers looking to slice it some more. Magic and Dumars both hit the floor, and the foul is called against 
Joe Dumars. That'll be the 15th foul against the Pistons. They're in the penalty, and they go to their bench. And more importantly, the second foul on Joe Dumars. Spider Sally, John Sally, and Vinny Johnson have come in for Detroit. Michael Cooper and Michael Thompson are in for the Lakers, and that just about takes care of their bench. Yeah, and uh, the bench so far for the Lakers has not been as productive as uh, Pat Riley expected them to be, at least offensively. There's Michael Thompson. Showed more aggressiveness in the last game, but didn't have the numbers the Lakers want. I guess after five men and double figures in the game they played, they didn't really need much of a bench offensively in the last affair. Reminded me a great deal of the Celtics. Valley double on Danley. He's got to find an open man. Throws it away to Magic Johnson. Pistons didn't move without the ball offensively effective. Well, it was the ex excellent defense, too, by the Lakers. Cooper is really having a rough time shooting. He's two for 19 in the series now. Thomas. Oh! Sally tried to crash the boards. Nothing doing. Lakers coming back. And a foul. Pushing foul. And the Lakers will shoot, too. You can see the rotation defensively and how active the Lakers are cutting off all the passing angles, and there's Magic making the steal. Sally committing the first foul. His first. They're in the penalty. A.C. Green on the free throw line. He has four points and four boards so far. Well, he's turned it around since that embarrassment in game one when he didn't have much help and was beaten badly by Danley. Well, he's turned it around and he's just playing the best ball he's played all year for this for the Lakers. You know, as I was saying, you know, in the middle of the year, he, he went into his slump. Then in the playoffs, at the end of the season, we saw Rambis start for this ball club. And since they've got an AC Green back in the lineup, they run much better. The Lakers have run off eight straight, and so Chuck Daly wants to bring things to a halt, and he does. 3.24 to go in the first period. This is the view of downtown Detroit here near the Detroit River. Pistons by one. Now, what do the Piston players think of their situation into the series right now? I think um, a lot of things. Us relaxing because we're home, relaxing because we had the crowd. We have everything going in our favor except the game wasn't played yet. You know, we already had the game won without playing it. And I think that was a letdown on our part mentally. We're probably in the finals once in our life, maybe. But then again, you know, we're not promised next year. We got to take advantage of it while we can. You know, it's good to have the media attention and the people pulling for you, but you have to keep everything in perspective. You have to go out there and win basketball games. I think game four is going to be the pivotal game for both. If they win, it's going to be a long road for us to ever come back. Uh, it's a must game for us. Both these games are must games for us, but this next one, if we lose this one, it's going to be very difficult. Ever the realist is Bill Lane Beer and uh, three to one down against the world champs with two of the next uh, three being at home for the Lakers wouldn't really set much of a chance for the Pistons, Bill. It sure wouldn't, didn't it? And they have to come out and continue playing a strong game. Danley pulls up. Since Danley's basket a minute and 41 seconds ago when the Pistons led by nine, the Lakers have been on an eight nothing run and now they're in a position to take their first lead since very early in the game. Inside Michael Thompson and the Lakers are up 22 to 21. And you see right away after the timeout, Pat Riley wants to give Michael Thompson some confidence at the offensive end of the court. 